Today we're going to be testing out Comet, an AI browser by Perplexity, and in this video we're going to test out all the different AI features that it has to offer, and we're going to see if it is actually useful or a gimmick. And by the end of the video you'll know exactly what my thoughts are as we put it through some real life testing. When you first install Perplexity it's going to ask you some settings like, hey which planet do you want to use, and truthfully I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it's going to also ask you stuff like, hey do you want to import all your settings from another browser, so I allowed it to import all my settings from Chrome, it automatically installed all my little plugins up here. And one thing you'll notice is this button here called Assistant. There is also this one here, which is a summarizer, and we have this button here, which is a voice mode. And also in the top left, we can do voice dictation. Comet, can you create a new Google Doc for me? Okay, so it opened up Google Docs, but didn't actually create a new Google Doc. All right, so we are going to create a Google Doc now, and we are going to get the assistant to generate a story for us and it's going to type it onto our Google Doc. So we can just go on the right here and we can just ask something. So, hey, can you write a story about an alien on Mars? If you guys enjoy AI content, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want access to comment, I will send out some invite codes this week in my newsletter. I have a link in the description below as well as the pinned comment so you can register on the newsletter. It's free, one email per week no spam, and I'll send out some comment invites there. So let's continue. So you can see on the right here, it understands that it has to write on the Google Doc. So it's like, okay, we have to do this now. And it says, hey, there's the steps, and it understands the steps that it has to do. So it's going to insert a 600 to 800 word original short story about an alien on Mars into the current Google Doc, and it's going to have a compelling title with three to four short sections. So you can see everything that it's going to do on the right in our assistant and actually at the bottom here you can actually see the button that says stop comment assistant. So right now our assistant is actually typing into a Google Doc a story for us based on our prompt. Truthfully, this isn't the coolest application because you can just go to a large language model and then have it type up a story and copy it over to a doc or Google themselves have Gemini built into Google Docs where you can generate stories, but this is just the glimpse of what the Comet browser can do. It has access to your browser and has access to your information and the pages that you're on to be able to pull off really cool things. So for example, say we are on the web and we come across a really cool article like this, we can just go up into the top right and click this to summarize the current web page. We can see here now on the right a full summary with our sources and we can even see the steps that it has taken. We can say add this to our Google Doc and cite the sources. You can actually see on the right here it is still working and as it's working we can actually flip back and you'll notice that the assistant changes because you can have multiple assistants running at the same time working for you. So this one actually finished writing out our story and you can see our story here written on a Google Doc that our Comet browser created. We can come back here to our summary and though we can see here it has found the end of the document and it's going to start writing the summary into our document. So imagine you have a whole bunch of tabs open and you want to just get like quick little summaries of them while you're doing research on a topic. You can quickly tell your browser, hey, keep adding these to a document and you can have like nice bullet point form information and your source cited. So you can see here it is actually working and it is typing up the summary. So it's highlighted the title, it's bolded it. You can see it's actually like literally highlighted and bolded and then it will go on and continue to start typing up the summary that it already generated. Is this fast? No, it is not. But it's the whole idea that you can just kind of run this in the background and have it do stuff for you. So I don't have to do this. Is this the fastest? No, it's not. And I know some people might say, hey, it's quicker for you to just kind of copy the entire content over to the Google Doc after it's made the summary. I mean, the summary is really quick. It's like one click built into the browser. I think that's really cool. But I know you're saying, hey, we can just copy it over to the Google Doc. But let me show you this next example of something that you can't do without this Comet browser. So if we gave it a prompt like this, which said basically, I want you to look at my YouTube watch history and then suggest something for me to watch on Netflix, it can actually do that because it has the ability to go to YouTube history and look at it and kind of look through all the videos I like. And then it's going to go to Netflix and kind of compare it. It's going to say, hey, 
this is what you like. So we're not at the mercy of Netflix's algorithm. We can actually expand it outwards and say, hey, we watch a lot of cooking videos on YouTube, let's say. Is there any good cooking videos on Netflix that I'm missing out on that I would like? So you can actually see here it has reached July 25th and it gives us good coverage for the last 30 days. It's already received 30 days of content and data to say, hey, this is what you like watching. I really think to get the most out of a browser like this, you kind of have to think outside of the box. So you can say, hey, I want to maximize my entertainment and you can do something like I'm doing now. And I'm sure there's tons of different use case examples and let me know in the comments below what you're going to use this for or already use it for. And I'd love to know what your thoughts are, but I think if you're just using this as like a traditional browser where you're just surfing, it's not gonna be really any different than Chrome. But if you're actually using it and maximizing the AI capabilities, it's pretty cool. So on the right here, we can see like tech stuff, science, space, and engineering. I've really gotten into those type of videos, true crime and investigations. Uh, my wife, Dana, watches a lot of that and she sends me videos to watch and sports. So it did a pretty good job. Another thing I see a lot of people use this with is for social media. So depending on which website you're on, if you click the ask anything, it actually gives you suggestions on things you can do on the website itself. So we can actually click draft a post and it's going to help us create a tweet. So you can see here, it's flashing blue on my screen. It's accessing the website and it is coming up with a actual tweet for us and saying, hey, trying out the comment assistant to speed up my workflow drafting posts, summarizing articles, and automating a busy work right from the browser is a game changer. So here's our tweet that it has just made for us and we can hit post. Can we make a post about GPT-5 and let's see what it can do. Is it stuck to advertising just its own browser or can it do more? We're about to find out. So you can actually see on the right here, it says click into the post, replace any existing text with a tweet about GPT-5 and it says, thoughts on GPT-5. So you can see expecting sharper reasoning, better tools to use and safer autonomy. I could have been more specific in my prompt and it would actually help me make different tweets. We have a classic game of 2048. We're gonna see if the browser can actually help us play. So we're gonna launch the voice assistant. It has actually like a quick key, but hello, which move should I make? It seems like you're playing the game 2048. To give you advice on your next move, you could try to keep your highest tiles in one corner and focus on merging tiles of the same number. Try moving left. Okay. Good luck with the game. Let me know if you need more help. Keep going. What's my next move? Try moving up next. Okay. What's my next move? Now, try moving right. Okay. Next. Try moving left. Move right. Are you just going in a pattern? I'm here to help you with your strategy. Each move depends on the current state of your game board. If you have any specific board details or any challenges you're facing, let me know so I can suggest the best move for your situation. Can you see my board? I can't see your board. Well, that was a fun experiment. Let's use the assistant. You can see the Comet browser has taken over the game. It has the little blue square. Comet is running. It's coming up with a, it's starting a new game. All right, fine. It doesn't like what I did, even though I was trying to follow the voice assistant that couldn't see what I was doing. And we can see it's trying to refresh the page to see if the board loads properly. And it's saying, hey, we can't figure it out. All right, let's try one other test. I want you to play slower IO and not lose. I want you to achieve a high score. Use the nickname Franklin AI. On the current page, it enters in my nickname. So far, so good. We're making progress. And now it's going to click the play button and let's see if it can do it. It sees it and it says it has to click the play button. It says the game's showing tips. It's typed in my name a second time without clicking it. And it says, hey, the name got duplicated. So it's going to clear it. And the page refreshed. It's starting fresh. It's saying, okay, we can do this and it has the name in, and it's going to click the play button. Can it do it? Here we go, it is playing, and we are off. This is the Comet browser playing for me. How will it do? It's not really doing a lot of moving right now. I gotta say, it's just going straight. Maybe this is the strategy. It knows something we don't. Can it move? 
great progress. I'm continuing to grow. Well, you kind of have to move. So this browser has some pretty cool and practical use cases, like quickly being able to summarize or helping you write emails or getting summaries of your emails. I can quickly go in and type up saying, hey, get me a summary of my last 10 emails or all the emails I haven't read. Just give me a quick summary of what I missed. So it does a pretty good job at that. Maybe you wanna hook up your text messaging app. You can have it give you a summary of the last you know, 100 messages in a group chat. So it has the capability of doing things like that that are pretty useful. But is it great? Can it fill out forms for you? I think it will struggle. I mean, it struggled just entering a text box with my name and hitting submit. So I think it's like, it feels very close to being useful, but also very far away because sometimes it does things extremely well and other times not so well. Like for example, the voice mode is just you talking to an AI that doesn't have really anything to do with the entire browser experience. This voice dictation is literally just for searching on perplexity when you type up the top bar and it acts as your search. So it doesn't do anything but help you search things at the top bar. I think the coolest feature is this assistant, which can actually interact with your browser, which doesn't seem super gimmicky and it has some pretty cool use cases, but sometimes it just completely fails and it seems a little slow. But on the flip side, you can run multiple of them and they can just kind of run in the background through multiple tabs, therefore increasing the use case or the effectiveness because they can just kind of run in the back while you're doing other things on different tabs. So overall, it is pretty cool and I love AI, I love technology, and I think the progression of this stuff will get better over time. Like if you think this is the worst an AI browser will be and it can only get better from here on out. And the AI browser scene seems to be a exploding. There seems to be a lot of different AI browsers, which is great for us because as a consumer, we are going to win with better technology. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed this type of content. It just tells the algorithm you want to see more of it. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. AI tools, AI news.